All right, we're back again, and we're going to add a little more interest to this uh, this cloud thing we've got here. Uh, we're going to do that with the smear tool, and we're not just going to stop with the smear tool because that would be just too computery looking. Uh, we're going to do um, something trying to get something a little bit like a watercolor effect. So let's just uh, grab maybe the smear 50 or the smear 100. Let's try just the regular smear at this point. There we go, like that. Um, what we want is to get these to look like they're lying flat on the horizon and uh, we don't just want them smeary because like I said that's just that literally looks like you just took a smear tool and smeared something but we are going to go ahead and and just smear the bottom of these out because they look like the flat part of these clouds the bottom part of these clouds have been um, how do you say they're they're laying flat and the top parts are puffy <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and go all the way towards the horizon with that again not really worrying about this uh, this foreground because we always can paint it back in later I'm gonna go back to that swap screen make sure I have that Make sure I have that uh, original in there. And I'm going to dissolve this halfway. I'm going to go to filter and combine with swap and mix buffers. And just do it about halfway. Okay, hit OK. And that's kind of cool. It looks like the clouds are coming up over this a little bit. But I'm going to reduce that a bit because it's too much, really. Uh, I'm going to go back here, make sure I have that. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to go into. Let's see, mode, and just click on rub through, and just paint that back in, like such. And there you go. Um, I might keep some of that. I'll filter and fade last action. Like I said, keep some of that there because it looks kind of cool. Hit OK, and maybe I'll do that one more time. Fade it out again. So we still have it just a little bit right in front of that hill. All right, so that adds just a little more interest, a little more wispiness to our clouds. Uh, it doesn't have to be all solid looking. Kind of also looks like we had some water, <clears throat> water on our painting, and we smeared it around. So uh, I think we've done everything we need to do to this background. Um, but since this background is not going to be our center of focus, we're really going to focus on the foreground in this painting. I think we're going to want to. Uh, make this a little less saturated. I'm going to go ahead and store a copy of this for later if we need it. And I'm just going to adjust the saturation on this. Not everything has to be super saturated. Remember, things in the background tend to look less saturated than things in the foreground. Um, that's one way we can give depth to an image. Uh, another way is things, you know, closer to the <laughs> things um, closer to the bottom look closer to the user uh, because we're accustomed to seeing things that way. Uh, things that are bigger look like they're closer, <laughs> obviously. Uh, those are just a few of the techniques we use to to get depth. But here we're using the the saturation um, to force this into the background. And I'm going to store a copy of this for later reference. We need it again and at this point we're ready to start painting and we just really want to get an idea of what our painting is going to look like we just want to kind of create a lay of the land uh, I'm just gonna use a smear brush to do this uh, probably just kind of get a basic idea of where I want to go with this uh, not really sure yet <clears throat> I might put that on uh, paint smear mode that actually takes the current uh, paint color And paints it down and then start smearing it and I really haven't decided what we're gonna paint yet I really wanted to start fresh and just do something with this I haven't quite decided yet what that's gonna be so I'm just getting the lay of the land right now I 
All right, so that's a start, anyways. Mm. I'm just painting with a mouse here. Don't have to be overly, you know, complicated with it. All right. So, anyways, that gives us an idea. What's something going back there like that? Let's see, not that blurry though. <laughs> Just something going back towards those hills back there, like that. Let's see. Don't want all that. Whoops. I want to make sure I'm using the most recent version of that in that swap image. I just want to paint a little bit of that out. Not quite that much. Okay, whoops. Still too much. Alright, so there we go. Um, hmm. And that'll sort of form the, uh, the template or the basis for what we're going to, uh, the shapes we're going to follow in this foreground area. Um, and I'm not really a layersy painting kind of guy. But I do use them, so I'm going to go ahead and use them in this instance. And uh, I'm going to use that multiply mode, uh, which is the default mode, so I just have to add a layer. And uh, let's see. There's all kinds of ways we could add some uh, interesting things here. We have some nice cartoony brushes here that could be useful. These little rocks or things like that. But the problem with these is they look like they're just... Uh, we're looking straight down on them. We want them to look flat. So there's one thing we can do here. Go into uh, brush and store and manage a copy. Um, in fact, even better. Let's go to uh, brush and resample. And we're going to change only the height, not the width. As 90. So I'm just going to type 50. What you have to do here is turn off constraint that way you can have uh, width and height that are different and now we have kind of a flat lying uh, thing that's been squished now I also want to add some rotation to that so let's go back to that store and manage a copy or there's a, a quick shortcut to it right there at the top of the screen and here we can also rotate this and I do believe this is a uh, animated brush. Let me see. Show film strip. Yes, we have several different images <laughs> in this brush that you can see being animated there. And we're just going to rotate it enough so that it looks like it's following the, uh, as we say, the lay of the land. Oh, that's the scale. I'm looking for rotation. There we go. Not quite that much. Uh, let's see in there somewhere all right and uh, remember we're on the second layer um, so basically paint you can paint with one button and then with the other button you can erase erasing is basically setting it to the uh, the original color or this secondary color um, same thing so uh, very useful by the way you can paint and erase that erasing gives you more interest instead of just laying down a bunch of uh, rocks in there you can erase them and make it like look like you have highlights in there uh, or something to that effect. Let's uh, do the same on the other side. Also remember you can scale these so you can make them look like they're getting closer or further away. And you can continue to rotate these as, as you need. Let's see. See there? It looks like they're getting closer. And following the lay of the land makes it look a lot more interesting. Uh, we can make them darker change the spacing all that stuff all right so um, might want to make them really small we're getting back here and keep in mind you can always erase as needed and you can also change other parameters as well uh, let's see getting really far away now let's see going into settings you can also change the uh, random position down a bit so they look like they're closer together uh, you can change the number of steps all that stuff 
So, very useful number of parameters that you can get in there. Let me close the uh, film strip there and get a little more space on screen. Uh, we don't want to completely cover up our image though. We want to, we're just laying in some textures right now. We can come back later. But right now we just want some rock textures in there. Remember I'm just doing this all with the brush. All with a mouse. And one more time, just a little smaller. Back in the background. All right, so and, and erasing this is what's going to give us some of this, some of this interest. Not just big blocky areas of, of solid textures. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of rocks. There's going to be some other stuff in there. Um, at this point, bear in mind we can change the uh, the color of this. Remember, we're just changing the, the color of this foreground layer. And we can do all sorts of interesting things with this. Um, change the contrast. All that stuff. Alright, so that's one interesting layer. Um, and uh, when we come back, we'll start adding some foliage and uh, doing some other interesting things to this so uh, thanks again for watching um more to come and talk to you later